Hi, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. In the previous video, I have discussed in detail example 3.6 using traditional approach. And so in this video, I'm going to look at the same example. But um, here, I'm going to show you how to do that by taking the p-value approach. So for the first step is similar as what you have seen in the traditional approach, which is to state the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis and based on the example here this is the statement which corresponds to the um, alternative hypothesis and you will see that you will be able to write down your alternative hypothesis as mu for ohio minus mu for nationwide is less than zero and therefore your null hypothesis is going to be mu for ohio minus mu of nationwide is greater than or equal to zero so that's the first step and for the second step is also uh, similar to what you have seen in the traditional procedure which is to uh, obtain or to calculate the test statistic and here we have the following test statistics okay so this is the formula which i have already discussed in details in the previous video so i'm just going to state down again uh, to write down again the formula just you know for clarification but if you want to know more about this i suggest that you refer to my previous video okay so this is the formula that you will be using in order to calculate the test statistic and you substitute the values for example this is the x bar for nationwide and this is the x bar for ohio so you can find all the values needed from the example here and you substitute these values into the formula and the result that you will get is negative 3.65 so these two steps here are similar to the steps that you have seen in the traditional approach so next is the third step, which is to find the p-value. Okay, so your job is to find what is the p-value. So what is p-value? I have talked about this before, but I'm going to state the meaning of it again, just to ensure that everybody understands the meaning of p-value. So p-value here is the probability of getting the result at least as extreme as the observed value under or assuming that the null hypothesis is true okay so i'm going to give you an example what it means by that so basically um, when you talk about observed value uh, this is an example of observed value the value which you have observed from your data or the value that you get based on your experiment for example so so if you if it says here probability of getting the result at least as extreme so if this is negative 3.65 if i sketch the position of negative 3.65 negative 3.65 is somewhere here so the result that is extreme means uh, the probability of getting the result of negative 3.65 and towards the left of the distribution in this direction in the towards the end of the distribution so that's what it means by getting the result at least as extreme as the observed value okay so based on that you need to find what's the area and area here is the probability okay all right um, now since this test statistic uh, is related to the standard normal distribution table so that's the table we are going to refer next in order to find the p-value 
Okay, so uh, let's talk a little bit more about the p-value and I'm going to give you some examples. Now, let's say that your test statistic is equal to 1.32. So, in other words, this is the observed value. Okay, so if I sketch the position of 1.32 on the standard normal distribution curve, uh, this is 0, so 1.32 can be somewhere here. So if you talk about observing or getting at least as extreme as the observed value, it means you want to know what is the probability of getting the result of 1.32 and towards the, the end of the distribution. So when you are asking about probability, you are actually asking about the, the area, the area from 1.32 towards the end so that's the meaning of uh, the given statement here okay so in order to find what's the probability of that one you can see that now what we have here is similar to the diagram shown on this table here therefore you can get the result directly from the table by looking at 1.32 so this is the the value on the horizontal axis and 1.32 is given by this column here and the column and the row at the top so 1.32 means this is 1.3 plus 0 0.02 so the area is 0 0.0934 so this is the p-value if the test statistic is 1.32 now let's say the test statistic is negative 2.85 so let us sketch the position of negative 2.85 this is 0 so negative 2.85 must be somewhere here and so if you talk about p-value you are interested to find the probability of observing the result as extreme as this one so it could be in this direction so what is the probability of getting the result at least negative 2.85 towards the end so that is the extreme or that is towards the end of the distribution or the extreme values okay so um, you are looking to find the probability or the area of that and we know that in this table here the values of z are all positive values so what you can do is since the distribution is symmetric you can um, consider changing the negative sign to a positive sign whereby this is a zero and so negative 2.85 can be considered as 2.85 and so you can find what's the area here so what's the area and this area will be similar to the area that you are originally looking for and since this diagram here now matches what you are seeing on the table therefore the value 2.85 can be obtained directly from the table so you just refer to 2.8 and 5 so 0 0.05 over here okay so this one is the area or the probability or the p-value so 0 0.0022 now let's go back to our example here so if I sketch the position of negative 3.65 or I don't have to sketch actually this is already the position of negative 3.65 yeah and therefore I want to know what's the area what's the area for this one yeah so based on the table okay, if you look at the table um, you can see that um, if you want you can transform the negative side to a positive side so that's what we're going to do now okay I'm going to um, transform so this is uh, originally we're looking for negative 3.65 what's the area and so since z values are all here positive values so we can transform to a positive side which is um, this one given here 
so this is 3.65 so we need to find what's the area here and this area will be equal to the area that you are originally looking for so if you look at the table here the the last value for z is 3.009 which is 3.49 so you can see that for 3.49 it must be somewhere here right so 3.49 must be on this side and so the area is 0 0.0002 so the area of 3.49 is this one is 3.49 the area here is uh, 0 0.0002 so therefore uh, what you're looking for is 3.65 and since this is the last observation what we can say that the area is going to be less than that because the purple area is definitely going to be less than 0 0.0002 okay so that is the answer that you can um, write down for this uh, part here so i can say that p value for this is less than 0 0.0002 okay from the table yeah now the fourth step is to decide Okay, you're going to decide whether you reject or do not reject denial hypothesis and your decision will be based on comparing comparing p-value with alpha and in this case alpha is 0 0.05 so here what we have is a value that is very small less than 0 0.0002 whereas alpha is 0 0.05 so clearly uh, p value is less than alpha and therefore uh, h null will be rejected okay so that's the basis for making the decision here now the last step is the conclusion and the conclusion is similar to what you have seen in the traditional approach therefore we say that there is enough evidence to support that the mean ACT score for Ohio is below the national average. Alright, I think that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching.